Shabbat Shalom uh, Mishpacha. Our Pashas today is Pasha Teruma, which is from the book of Exodus. But before we get to our Pasha, I'd like to do a public prayer, which I don't often do, but I think it's a... I have a feeling upon myself that I should pray this, because it will... It will help certain people out there who are seeking answers from God. So, before we pray, I'm going to read some Psalms. This will be Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where does my help come from? My help comes from Hashem who made the Shemaim and the earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He that keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he that keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Hashem is your keeper, Hashem is your shade upon your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. Hashem shall preserve you from all evil, He shall preserve your soul. Elohim shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth even forevermore. So now we'll go to a reading of Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Hashem, consider my meditation. Hearken to the voice of my cry. My King, my power, I will pray to you. My voice you will hear in the morning. O Hashem, in the morning will I direct my prayers to you and will look up. Certainly, you are not the El that approves wickedness, neither shall evil people dwell with you. False light bearers shall not stand in your sight. You hate all who practice idle praise, paying homage to them. You shall destroy them that speak lies. Hashem abhors the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your loving kindness. In your fear, I will pay homage towards your holy temple. Lead me, O Hashem, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make your way straight before my face. For there is no trustworthiness in their mouth. Their inner part is very wicked. Their throat is an open grave. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy them, O Elohim. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their sins, for they have rebelled against you. But let all those that put their trust in you rejoice. Let them shout for joy, because you defend them. Let them also that love your name be joyful in you. For you, Hashem, will bless the righteous with favor and surround him with a shield. Psalm 3 Hashem, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be, they be which say of my soul, There is no help for him in Elohim, Selah. But you, Hashem, are a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. I cry to Hashem with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy mountain, Selah. I laid me down and slept. I awakened, for Hashem has sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousand of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Hashem, rescue me, O my power, for you have struck all my enemies. Upon the cheekbone you have broken the teeth of the wicked. Rescue belongs to Hashem. Your blessing is upon your people. Selah. Abba, we thank you. Abba, I thank you and I give you praises and I give you glory and esteem. Abba, I pray for those that are sick. This is for you that are sick. Those that are looking for healing. For God sends His healing anointing upon you. He sends His healing anointing upon you to heal you. To make you complete. To make you whole. And Abba, I pray for those that are looking for employment that are looking for jobs, that are looking to bring in sustenance for their families through salary, through business, otherwise through means of righteous upstanding. 
I petition for those people and I speak to those people that are in that particular area of their life for Hashem, for the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob has heard your cry. He has heard you, that you are seeking his help. He is sending forth his help. You that are looking for employment, jobs shall be given to you. You that are looking for business, businesses shall be given to you. So that you may be blessed, you may prosper in Torah, in the writings of the prophets, that you may prosper, you may be blessed. You may be blessed with healing, you may be blessed with prosperity, abundance and great health. For those that are looking for relationships, healing in their relationships, perhaps family adversity, problems in family, trying to mend those relationships that they feel are important to them, let those relationships be healed. So. God is sending His healing anointing upon those relationships. God is healing those relationships as I speak. And God is bringing healing, wholesome healing upon these relationships so that people who once may have disagreed with each other are now in agreement and in love with each other's ways of living and they live in peace. They let live in peace and they live in peace so with that I thank you Abba I thank you that you hear our prayers I thank you that we hear our cries and that you bless the people who are listening and you bless the house of Israel I thank you I bless your holy name Amen we Amen ok so our Pasha today is as I said earlier it was Pasha's Daruma but before I get into the Pasha I wanted to say that uh, I don't think many people know that we have changed or we have made a new website a new channel uh, in YouTube where we are now currently posting our lectures so I may do a little recording separately to put it in the old site so that people may know that uh, we are in the new site now and so they can come over here and uh, place their bookmark put a you know, like to the recording also subscribe so that they may be informed about uh, new teachings now Pasha's 19 Teruma uh, is in the book of Exodus chapters 25 verses 1 uh, which starts with the uh, then Hashem by the way this reading is from the Hidden Truths of Blake Scrolls, Abrahamic Faith, and uh, Nezani Hebraic Study Scriptures. Then Hashem spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering. From everyone who gives it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. And this is the offering which you shall take from them, gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen, and goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, blue skins and acacia wood, oil for the light, and spices for the anointing, oil for the sweet incense. Now notice that all these mentions of offerings are not cheap items, they are expensive items. Taruma basically means to give an offering, a love offering, and here God is commanding His people that they should bring a love offering to God and the love offering is not just well here you go it's my five dollars no he's saying that give me the best you have and the best they have would be it would be gold it will be silver it will be bronze those items that jewelry was made from also the blue and the purple were very expensive dyes that were used in clothes to make clothes and then fine linen clothes of, co of course goats hair which is not cheap either ram skin which would be you know also you have to pay a price for it blue skins and acacia wood expensive items now then it goes on the oil for the light which light the menorah which oil pure single press virgin olive oil again not cheap oil 
Then God goes and says, onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod in the breastplate. Whose breastplate? Of course, the high priest, the twelve stones that match the twelve tribes. It says, let them make me a holy place that I may dwell among them. So it's amazing that how God is commanding them. That In fact, God is saying that those things you love, <laughs> technically if you love those things, you give them to me. That means you love me as well. Maybe even more than the things. He says, according to all that I show you, that is the pattern of the tent and the pattern of all his furnishings, just so you shall make it. What pattern exactly? What pattern? People hadn't seen no pattern. So the pattern that had been seen was when Moses went up on the top of the mountain, he was shown the pattern of the uh, tabernacle, and he was also shown the pattern of the menorah, of how to make the menorah. In fact, he was shown a blueprint, a picture, like a, a complete made one. And that would be the menorah that would be in the heavens. So Moses was given, a, in perhaps in a vision form, he was shown this article, these things, so Moses knew exactly how with this he needs to make the one on the earth. He was you know, exact, exactly identical. <clears throat> so having said that, uh, these are the items that were meant to be used in the holy tabernacle. And Moses was given detailed instructions on top of the summit of Mount Sinai on how to construct this dwelling of God so that it could easily be dismantled and it could easily be transported as they went on their journey. It was like almost a uh, you know ready-made foldable type of uh, you know structure. It was easy to set up and easy to dismantle. And then it also speaks about making these fine uh, art artistically woven curtains uh, with the ark containing the tablets of testimony engraved with the Ten Commandments on the arcs stood two winged cherubim, basically cherubim or cherubim. These were like angelic, two angels with angelic faces, but their face, you know, the face wasn't a face. It was just like a round head, like it appeared to show a face, but you could not tell whether that was a male cherubim or a female cherubim, was a male angel or a female angel. So that was left to your imagination, whether it's a male or female, but it was just the uh, kind of, uh, you know, like an outline of two angels. And these were hammered out of pure gold. And then the menorah was in the outer chamber which was also made from pure gold and then there was also a table there on which the showbread was arranged. The sanctuary had three walls and they were fitted together with 48 upright wooden boards, each of which was overlaid with gold and held up by a pair of silver foundation sockets. A roof had three layers of coverings a multicolored wool, linen, a covering made of goat's hair, covering made of ram and uh, some takash skins. Across the front of the sanctuary was an embroidered screen held by five posts. Surrounding the sanctuary and the copper-plated altar uh, which fronted it was enclosure of linen hangings. Remember the God also asked to collect copper. So the copper was used, the one that was collected it was used to make the copper uh, altar. <coughs> Excuse me. So the linen hangings were supported by 60 wooden poles with silver hooks and trimmings. And of course, copper stakes in the ground. So here God instructs about, you know, giving a taruma, a love offering to God, in the book of Exodus chapters 25, and the Midrash notes that everything created, every created entity has a spark of godliness within it, uh, a point of divinity that constitutes its soul and spiritual function and design. So when we bring something to, to serve the Creator, uh, we penetrate the shell of mundanity, revealing and realizing its divine essence. 
Thus we elevate the sparks, reuniting them with their source. Why, again, as I mentioned, why gold, silver, and copper? These materials were donated for the tabernacle, which correspond to the components of the human being. Gold is the soul, silver the body, copper the voice, and blue the veins, purple the flesh, red the blood, flax the intestines, goat's hair, which is the hair of humans, and ram skins dyed red, means the skin of the face, the takhar skins, which means the scalp, the shittim wood, the bones, oil for lighting, it represents the eyes, spices for the anointing of oil, and for the sweet incense, the nose, mouth, and palate. And we have the shoham stones and the gemstones for setting, which represent the kidneys and the heart. And the Midrash notes that Rabbi Shemuel said, the materials donated for the Mishkan correspond to the heavens. He said, gold is the sun, silver the moon, copper the western horizon at sunset, blue the sky, purple the clouds, red the rainbow, flax the seraphim, goat the constellation of Capricorn, ram skins dyed red, thunder, tachai skins, lightning, shittim wood, shooting stars, oil for lighting, the seven planets, spices for anointing the oil, for the incense, dew and rain, the shoham stones, and the gemstones for setting, hail and snow, said God, my dwelling is in the heavens, if you make me a sanctuary on earth, I shall dwell in it. So the Mishkan or the tabernacle is the equivalent of the universe. So we note that regarding the work of the first day of creation, it said, He who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, spoken in Psalms 104.2, and regarding the making of the tabernacle, it says, And you shall make curtains of goats here for a tent over the tabernacle, speaking in Exodus 26.7. The second day of creation, we're told, that Let there be a firmament, and let it divide between the waters, and the waters, which is in Genesis chapter 1, verse 6. Regarding the making of the Mishkan, it says, And the veil shall divide for you between the holy and the holy of holies. So technically, the different items here mention the different days of the week. And then the sixth day, when it comes, uh, we, uh, of course, you know, man was created to inhabit and cultivate the earth. Regarding the, the Mishkan, then God said to Moses, Bring Adam near to you, your brother. He will perform the service in the sanctuary. And we are told in the seventh day, the heaven and the earth were complete, and God completed his work, and God blessed and sanctified that work. And regarding the making of the tabernacle, he said, Thus was completed all the work of the tabernacle, and Moses blessed them. And it came to pass on the day that Moses completed the tabernacle and sanctified it, mentioned in the books of Exodus 39, chapters 32, uh, sorry, chapters 39, verse 32 uh, to 43, and Numbers 7 to 1. We are also told in the Midrash, in the Rabbah, that the world was not considered worthy to make use of gold, so why was it created? And we are told that for the for the tabernacle for the Michigan. And then we are told that they shall make for me a sanctuary and I will dwell amidst them. Twenty five eight. God desired a dwelling place in the lower realms. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's actually quite quite simple, although we don't tend to think so much about it. What does it mean that God will dwell in a tent. It wasn't technically about God dwelling in a tent, but it was more to do with, he was giving a model that when we do not have a standing upright temple, like a fixed structure, like remember, this was the mobile version of a temple. It could be carried around place to place whilst you're traveling. Whilst the, the later the fixed temple was fixed, but then you know it was destroyed twice, and so what we are told over here, uh, where God is talking about you know, him dwelling in the tent, technically the tent, 
technically the tent is is you and me and god dwells within us that's technically where god's glory is now majority of the time most of the people religious people they're looking for god in the clouds god by the way is not in the clouds uh, god is not in the sea um god is not in the field uh is god in in um, in the tree no god is not in the tree is god in plants no god is not in the plant where is god god is inside you yeah that's where you access god so i just i was speaking to some of my students to, today and i said to them that you know don't don't go searching for god and sticking your head in the sky and don't look for god in the in the temple wall in in jerusalem god is not there and that temple wall by the way it is well known fact historically that that was a place where the romans had their garrison and uh it's conjecture now that they you know that present day modern israel believes that that was one time temple wall that is not so because the temple wasn't even in the place where people claim to be having the temple so <clears throat> this is where we are and i think that is important we recognize that and sure you know there could be d- debate and discussion around it but from what my understanding and from my knowledge of history and what i know to be you know true of jerusalem is that there is a lot of places in israel today that are marked up by um, catholic people maybe in the times of constantine you know those places that are marked are not factual places where we are told that the actual things took place okay so with that you know i'm going to uh, thank you for listening i'm going to end this uh, lecture over here as a, uh, a a a good little intro so where i you know prayed for the people and i put out a little uh, you know some of these notes for you to listen to maybe you know listen to them a couple of times and then you can you know get your way around things and you know continue to move uh with the right intention and with the right attitude in your life so you know be blessed in god have a wonderful shabbat wonderful sabbath and a wonderful week ahead with that i will say to you shabbat shalom